Hi, welcome to another episode of The Real Deal. I'm Bryant Real, and today I want to talk about reviews. And being as this is my first solo video talking about writing and publishing, reviews uh, is an odd place to start, but I had a recent event that kind of made me want to say something about it. It was a positive event, don't worry. But uh, reviews are a sticky situation for authors. Um, because it's strongly discouraged from having uh, paid reviews or discouraged uh, having just going around having your friends and family go into your book and and uh, log reviews for you. It's all stuff that's discouraged and stuff that I don't do. Um, but they're very common and it can be tough to compete with. And you don't. It's not just with books. Like this is even an issue I find with like Rotten Tomatoes. You'll have, to be honest, both ends of the scale: the five and the one stars. Because you'll have, you know, people who are like friends with, or people who work at the studio who worked on the movie or their friends will go in and just maybe without even seeing it, just give it a five star review. But on the, on the other side, you'll have people who maybe don't like one of the actors or there's some sort of political, and you probably heard some of these stories, some sort of political element to the movie. And people will, be, again, be voting one stars despite having not seen it or really knowing anything about the movie itself. So they're voting on something surrounding the movie. And so if you're going around to friends and family saying, hey, can you just go give me a good review? It's nice because it brings your score average up, but it's, it's just not an honest review. And I get a lot of emails from uh, various organizations, uh, you know, offering services where you pay them a bunch of money and they'll, they'll find reviewers to review your books. Personally, I steer clear of those as well. Because, um, pay you know, if like Amazon or, or Goodreads find out you're paying for reviews, I think they'll just delete them. Um, it's a bit of a conflict of interest. I do think you probably more likely get an honest review with some of those than you would from friends or family members. One of the problems with them is they're just, they're not, it's not a helpful review for other people to see, right? So it's only there for you as the author to try to look good to sell more books, which I guess is, a, that's obviously a lot of people's goal. But if you're, if you value the quality of your writing and the feedback you're getting from your audience, then I think you need to stay away from having you know friends close friends family members review now i do have friends and family members that have left reviews for me but that's that's on their initiative and despite me saying not to do it i don't know you know if they're going to do it they're going to do it but but i will certainly don't encourage it and um so i guess i just want to talk about receive how to receive reviews and how to perceive reviews and how to leave review oh that would have been a good title i receive perceive and leave reviews. It's too late. I'm not starting over. So in terms of receiving reviews, I find them very valuable uh, and hard to get because again, I've, I've been trying to do this the most honest route possible. So a lot of the res reviews I got, and I'm not talking mostly, oh, sorry, I'm the mirror imaged. Uh, so Elf Mastery has the most reviews out of my three books, primarily because it's the first of the trilogy. And I'll discuss in a bit why that's important, you know, easier to get reviews for than the other the others. Um, but it's also one I had dedicated the most time and effort into uh, when it came out. Um, and I emailed just what, what I did to get reviews is I emailed lots of book bloggers. So I, I remember I stayed up like three nights in a row when I had a, when I had some time off, and uh, just emailed and emailed and emailed. Then I got a few reviews out of that. So it got a little bit of success, but I think for the amount of time and work that went into it, I'm not convinced that's the best way to go about it. Um, I did have success with giveaways on Goodreads, uh, just because the people who win those pretty much all give reviews, even if you don't even have to ask. I think they're just good about it. And, uh, and, they were, and they were, I had great reviews out of there. Um, but it's very costly. So even it's probably even more because you have to ship the books. I did. I was lucky. I had a couple that won and just asked for the ebook version, which I could just give them for free. But if you're giving away, you know, paperbacks or hardcovers, you're sending, you know, obviously paying the printing cost, but then also shipping it to the winners. And so it's probably even costlier than if you're just buying, paying people to review your books. Right. So, but it's, again, it's more honest, I guess. Um, although I guess you could debate that too. But anyway, so I did a lot of uh, soliciting to book bloggers and then um, uh, doing giveaways and just getting reviews off of those. So, and w whether or not that's how you're supposed to do it, I don't know. But, uh, and then any other reviews I've gotten have just come in normally. And that's ideal is when you're not even, as an author, 
I don't think you really want to be a part of the review process because even though they affect you greatly, as I've heard it put, reviews are for other readers. They're not for they're not really for author feedback, but as an author, and particularly one that doesn't have a whole lot of uh, reviews yet, um, it's very important feedback uh, to get from readers and stuff. So you know what they like, what they didn't like. But that goes into how you perceive the review. So my next step here is um, how how to interpret what you're getting for your reviews and making that useful information. I'm finding most people that leave reviews are in some way helpful. Um, I don't, I haven't had anybody personally yet who's just gone in and said, oh, this book sucks or, oh, this book rules. Usually most of the reviews I've had will itemize things people like or didn't like about it. Uh, I'm just going to show you how reviews work. So most I'm just going to be looking at Amazon and Goodreads here. So you're going to see some of my personal stuff. I'm going to share screen and hopefully uh, this records the shared screen. Okay, I think we're good. I'm going to go in here. Let's start with Goodreads just because we can see everything at once on one page. So this is my author dashboard. So if you've published anything, put yourself on Goodreads, uh, you get a lot of information off of here. And this shows you how many reviews I've got for each book, how many people are reading and listed on their to read and things like that. So this is my total rating amongst four books. So I've written the Elf Mastery Trilogy as well as a book called Loveless Mind, which has nothing. Mind you, I haven't marketed that at all. It's something I wrote for NaNoWriMo in two weeks. I think it's pretty cool, but you yeah, haven't pushed it at all. It's not done yet. I plan on doing a, a trilogy for that as well. But anyway, so you'll notice, okay, so Elf Mastery, the first book has had 34 ratings. It's got an average of 4.32. Uh, out of those 34 ratings, 21 of those were text reviews. Uh, if you look at Elf Doubt, that, the numbers drop way down. So four ratings, two text reviews, you know, look at the two read. This is so high for to read because of the giveaways, like lots of people just signed up and then never, when they didn't win, they never took it off. So I'd say about, should be about 40, 45. I think about 600 of these are just names that have been there forever. It's probably should be on 45 people's to read. Uh, and then this drops way down. The reason for that is because when I was looking for people to review, like book reviewers, uh, it's really hard to get somebody to do the second book of a series that hasn't already read the first one. So that becomes much more difficult because <laughs> it's like, you know, they have to read this one and then this one as well. So it's a lot harder to find people willing to do that. So I think all of these reviews are just people that reviewed the book. And then same with Elf Righteous. So I've only had one on that so far. It was really good. It was five stars. And it's this is not, again, somebody that I, I, I don't solicit my family members and friends to leave reviews. So that's this is actually somebody I don't know at all. So that's nice. In fact, that person did, uh, I think this was their highest rated book. So I think they did three. Okay, but anyways, uh, if I click on one of the books, we'll do Wealth Mastery because it has the most numbers on it. All right, so it'll go through my rating details. And this is actually kind of why I wanted to talk about this because I actually got recently my lowest review so far on this book, but it was actually very, very positive. It's like the best bad review I could have gotten. So I just kind of want to kind of want to go through that a little bit. So if you look at the rating details, it'll go through how many reviews and ratings go with each category. And I think that's pretty good. You know, obviously, as an author, you feel like you want to get the higher story, the, the better you feel about yourself. But I feel good about this, knowing that I don't really have any dishonest reviews. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. You'll see I have one two-star review. That's my lowest one so far. It's, it's a new one, but it's, it was a written review, and I actually really liked it, and I'll show it to you soon here. Uh, this is split between all the different copies of the book because there's a paperback version, audio version, the Kindle version, and now a hardcover version, but that's new. Nobody has it yet. Anyway, so then you scroll down. You can see all the different people and their ratings. So obviously this rustic book review. So that's one of the people that I had, uh, you know, emailed. She did the audio book one. Uh, but she was a book reviewer. Um, some of these are like giveaway people. I think there's a giveaway. Uh, I think they're, yeah, just, I don't know. They put these pictures in here. Um, oh yeah, this one here. So this is the two star review. Um, but honestly, it's, it was a very complimentary two-star review, so I just want to read that out. And it's just, 
Technically, I liked everything Real does. He avoids lots of fantasy tropes, develops characters beyond one-dimensional stereotypes, and injects new twists on classical creatures of fantasy. The plot is fine. I'm fully aware this is a book for kids. I'd say maybe grades five to seven if I had to guess. Yet despite good character growth and the promise of ongoing adventure in the trilogy, I feel like I've had enough after just the first book. I think this is just a case of personal taste. There aren't any flaws in Reel's writing, and I think most people who enjoy fantasy books and books written for younger audiences will like this. I listened to the book and the narrator was up to the task of bringing the characters to life. So this person did the audio book. And so there are... I've heard different feelings amongst book reviewers on how to rate a book that that you feel is good, but not to your personal taste. So I think a lot of people would argue that in his case, oh, he should rate higher. But uh, but the, it, I I don't care about that. I think the two star review is actually very helpful. And I'm going to tell you why, because if I'm looking at a book that I want to read. The five star reviews can be nice, but. Again, because I know a lot of people are just getting friends and family to review for five stars, they're often very generic feedback. Um, I don't look for those. I look for what, what I, I mean, I'll look at some and try to pick out some of what I think are the good ones or honest ones. But, but it's the bad ones that I'll often go to as well because I want to look at what people didn't like about the book, right? Um, and so I feel like if people are scrolling through mine, and they see this two star review and then read it, I think it's still a very good thing for them to say. So the fact that he rated this two stars, I feel like might be even better than if he had rated it four or five, right? Uh, just because I think it, stand, it makes it stand out more. And I think if, if people are like me, they'll want to see what people didn't like it to contrast it to what people do like it before they commit to reading it, so. So that's just an interesting perspective to have uh, is that your lower reviews aren't necessarily bad reviews. You do want your average to be decent. And I'm pretty happy with the average on this one. The struggle I have is getting more reviews. Uh, again, because I'm trying to do it straight laced. There's a little bit more work involved. And I guess just patience at this point. And then the, uh, the, the books, the later books in the trilogy are, you know, you got to wait for people to read this and then read the next ones. All right, so let's take a look at Amazon. This is where I really want more reviews because that's where the sales come in. You know, so you want your book to be noticed on here. Hold on. Okay, so Amazon, I don't have as many as I do on Goodreads. So, and it breaks it into different markets. So I have up here three different Elf Mastery Kindle Edition pages. And one is, actually I have four because I have one for the US you can see has 14 ratings, uh, one for the UK, which has 12, one for Canada, which has 10. And I just pulled up this one for Italy, just to have, you know, my main three markets are Canada, US and UK, but I don't have a, an Italian version. But a lot of these reviews are drawn from other, um, they come from like the, the American ones and stuff like that. I don't know how, I don't know how it cross platforms them or whatever. But, but there's a lot of crossover between the other ones. But these ones, as far as I've noticed, are all unique. The Canadian, American, UK. There might be some crossover. I don't, I don't, read, I don't make a point of reading through them. But uh, yeah, so I'm trying to get these up, um, which I'm you know, still working on. I'm going to try to do a video at some time on promotion because that's the part I really struggle with. It's just promoting my work. And then if you'd look at my other books here, um, I've got, you know, actually really solid on Elf Doubt. Just not a lot of ratings, but they're pretty good ratings. Uh, so that's good. Okay. And then on this one, I don't have any for Elf Righteous yet. All right. Well, that's my, oh, let me stop sharing here. Let me stop sharing here. There we go. Yeah, so that's my little report on reviews. Um, I think, uh, so let's see, receive, oh, and leave reviews. So I think um, as an author, I think I've become a lot more aware of how important reviews are to authors. Uh, so as an author, I don't think you wanna sweat over them. I mean, if you're getting a lot of bad reviews uh, fairly consistently, 
you know, you might just want to look at your craft, like what's, you know, something might be wrong with how you're writing or storytelling. Um, but other than that, a few bad reviews here and there, I think not only aren't bad, but can be helpful. It's very suspicious. You only have really, you know, four or five star reviews all the time. Uh, unless you have enough of them that's statistically impossible that you're, you know, doing it all behind the scenes yourself. You know, uh, so like, yeah, John Grisham's probably not like pushing a whole lot of his own, you know. Uh, or if, even if he is, he's not doing enough to be, have, be statistically significant on his overall score. But uh, well, leaving reviews, I think, uh, as, uh, uh, you know, it's just a great kindness to leave to other authors. And, and being honest, I, I don't see a huge value in get, leaving fake reviews except to make the author feel artificially good about themselves. But as a two-star review that I just showed you can tell, is you can leave a low score and still a very positive review. But I just think you need to be really open and honest about why you felt the way you did. And I think that goes for five and four-star reviews as well. It's very helpful for, to, to relate to other readers uh, exactly what you did like and didn't like because they might have different tastes than you. So I think it's just considerate to be very, very thoughtful behind your reviews. So, because they are important to us authors. Well, that's all I have to say about that. So I hope you a wonderful day.